Hi everyone, myself Nevata Ravi, working as assistant professor in the Department of Cyber Security and Data Science in MLR Institute of Technology. Today I am going to discuss about the topic recovery and atomicity and log based recovery. And my overview of presentation includes about recovery and atomicity, log based recovery, approaches to modify the database, and recovery with concurrent transactions. So this session mainly concentrates on recovery. That means while we are doing number of transactions at a time, so some transactions may be successful and some transactions may fail. Have to recover those failed transactions also. What are the steps that we need to follow? That concept will, will be dealt in this session. So about recovery and atomicity. As we all know that atomicity is one of the main properties. Right. So here the Acronym for ACID is nothing but A stands for atomicity. Okay. So, what is atomicity in short? Do full or nothing. That means you have to complete all the transactions or you must not complete any transaction at all. Okay. So, that is what we hear. We will uh, explain about atomicity till now. So, when a system crashes, it may have several transactions being executed and various files open for them to modify the data items. Right? While we are doing the transactions, so in between some, some failure occurs, right? Or when system crash occurs, then it may have several transactions being executed and various files open to update. Okay. So, transactions are made of various operations which are atomic in nature. Okay. So, but according to ACID properties of DBMS, atomicity of transactions is nothing but do full or nothing. That is, as a whole must be maintained. That is, either all operations are executed or none. Okay, in a transaction, all operations must be executed or none of the transactions is executed. Okay, so when a DBMS recovers from a crash, it should maintain the following. What are those steps? Right. So, here it should check the states of all transactions which were being executed. A transaction may be in the middle of some of operations that DBMS must ensure that atomicity of a transaction in this case. Why? Because, so here we have gone through some different states of a transaction. That is nothing but, see we have seen already six states of a transaction. That is uh, start state. Okay, next partially committed state, committed state, next here failed state, abort state. Okay, this is partially committed, committed, failed, abort and this is what last completed phase. Okay, these are the six states of a transaction. So, we must ensure that, so if, if a failure occurs in particular state, so, whether we have to roll back or we have to redo the transaction, that we have to know. Okay, that will be done in this recovery process. So, a transaction may be in the middle of some operation. The DBMS must ensure that, that the atomicity of transaction in this case, that is do full or nothing. So, it should check whether the transaction can be completed now or it needs to be rolled back. Okay, so it should check whether the transaction can be completed now. Okay. Or it needs to be rolled back. So, no transactions would be allowed to leave DBMS in an inconsistent state. There are two types of techniques which helps the DBMS in recovering as well as maintaining the atomicity of transaction. What are those two main techniques? Maintaining the logs of each transaction. That means for each and every transaction, whatever the operation that we are going to do in the database, a log will be maintained. Okay, if you want to update a data, if you want to delete a data, if you want to insert a data, a log will be maintained separately. That is one of the points that we need to know. Okay, to recover and writing them onto the some stable storage before actually modifying the database. That is nothing but, so directly communicating with the database sometimes may harms. So, with, for that, 
we used to do the operations in buffer if at all we are successful in buffer then we can directly update those changes or updations in the database permanently okay so here maintaining the logs of each transaction and writing them onto some stable storage actually before actually modifying the database maintaining shadow paging this is another technique this is one of the techniques that is maintaining logs and second one is maintaining shadow paging where the changes are done on a volatile memory and later actual database is up updated so here uh, we have already gone through this uh, shadow paging that is nothing but shadow copying technique right what is the technique so this is the old data that we used to contain and if at all uh, we want to update the data in this database what we have to do we have to copy all these data into a new one okay we have to copy all these data into a new one first okay next we need to update why because why we are copying so if at all we are updating in this some transaction or else some uh, system failure may occur then whole database will be disturbed here okay that is why see for backup purpose here we are copying the data here we will do all the updations and the updations are successful then we used to point some database pointer database db pointer to this new database or else it will be roll back to old database only this is what shadow copying technique which i have already discussed in our previous sessions so these are the two main things that we need to that we can help the dbms in recovering as well as maintaining the atomicity of a transaction okay let us discuss as we have discussed in this one in our previous sessions we used to discuss about how how to maintain logs what is log based recovery okay so what is log based recovery log is a sequence of records which maintains the records of actions performed by a transaction what is a log it is nothing but sequence of records okay a log of each transaction is maintained in some stable storage so that if any failures occurs then it can be recovered from there so what is the log here where we have to keep this logs so maintaining the logs is one point and we have to keep those logs in a safest manner in some storage devices right if at all we want we can get those logs from that storage devices okay so if any operation is performed on the database then it will be recorded in the log whatever the operation that we are going to perform on the database it will be recorded in the log that we are going to maintain but the process of storing the log should be done before the actual transaction is applied in the database so whatever the changes that we are going to do in the database before that only the process of storing the logs must be completed so here this is a simple example how the log that we have to maintain okay an update log record is represented as right that means here this log record which is for use it for updation okay how we can able to represent so ti this is one of the variable xj v1 v2 these are the fields for different fields what is this ti this represents the transaction okay either in t1 or t2 whatever the transactions that we are going to do next what is here xj so it is nothing but a data item okay so on which data item that we are going to modify okay next here value 1 this is the old value and here v2 is the new value that we are going to update so this old value we what is the meaning of this one this is nothing but in a particular transaction for particular data item i am changing the old value to this new value okay so that is the meaning for this one so what is here transaction identifier unique identifier of the transaction that perform the right operation here xj that's nothing but the data item unique identifier of data item return and what is this value old value value of data item prior to write and what is this new value value of data item after write operation okay so let us discuss this one with a simple example let us assume that there is a transaction to modify the city of a student okay the following logs are written for this transaction we want to update a city 
right of a particular student when the transaction is initiated then it writes start log whenever the transaction is initiated so start log so what is the representation of that one tn start that is transaction start okay when the transaction modifies city from noida to bangalore if i want to modify uh, what the city from noida to bangalore that means noida is what here old value bangalore is what here new value okay this is the old value this is the new value that i am going to update in a transaction then what will be the log that we have to write here for a particular transaction right for a data item that is nothing but what we are modifying city that is what the data item city old value what is that old value noida what is the new value that we are going to update bangalore this is what the representation of a log updation okay so when the transaction is finished then it writes another log to indicate that the end of the transaction see this is the representation of starting of transaction this is the updation and what is the end of the transaction so after this transaction after this representation only we can assume that or we can represent that the transaction has been committed that means so this what we have updated then it will be updated in the database permanently that is what here commit is meant for okay so after completion of this uh, uh, updation then we have to represent as transaction commit okay so this is what the representation of a log and next approaches to modify a database so the, here we have two different approaches okay what is the first one is deferred database modification and the second one is immediate database modification so whatever the data that we have to modify that will be reflected in an immediate right so here the referred modification technique occurs if the transaction does not modify the database until it has committed right so this modification occurs if a transaction does not modify the database until it has been committed that means it will wait for the commit statement until commit it will not modify okay the database will not be updated in this method all the logs are created and stored in a stable storage okay and the database is updated when the transaction commits so whatever the transactions that i am going to perform here for example tn start okay here i am going to update like uh, for example um, here transaction one data item that is city and in the previous example what we have discussed here for a particular transaction city and here i am going to update the old value noida as bangalore and this is the log i have created till now it will not update the database in the database it will not update in the database why because here there is no commit so after the transaction has been committed tn commit after seeing this statement only we can able to modify this particular data into a database permanently that is what the step here next what is immediate database modification the immediate modification technique occurs if the database modifications occurs while the transaction is still active when the transaction is still active that means without seeing committing and everything so whatever the updations that we are doing that will be immediately reflected to the database in this technique the database is modified immediately after every operation it follows an actual database modification so these are the two different approaches to modify a database next how we can able to recovery how we can able to recover the logs right so that is what here the concept recovery use a log records when the system is crashed then the system consults the log to find which transactions need to be undone and which transactions need to be redone that means here we have dealt already about six states right so here we need to know how many transactions have to be redone and how many transactions have to be undone undone means whatever the operations that we have stopped only from that operation we need to start what is redone redone means so uh, whatever the operations that we have already done will be removed from starting onwards the transaction must be performed that is what redo operation 
so here we need to know how many transactions that we need to do undo operation and for how many transactions that we need to do redo operation also that is what the thing by seeing the logs only we can able to know that one so if the log contains the record ti start ti commit so if the log contains ti start and ti commit both or or only ti commit if the log contains for example this is one log if the, which i have represented which i have created this is one log which i have created so in this log if i represented ti start and here some tn same what i want to represent name i want to change name as a b this is the old value this is the new value okay and tn put here commit if in a transaction or in a log if i saw these two then what operation that we have to do then we can do redo operation redone okay or else if a log contains only commit tn commit instead of representing all these three if a log contains only tn commit that in that case also we have to do redo operation right so if a log contains only start but we doesn't bother about commit that means the transaction has been started but not yet committed then what we have to do we have to do undo operation okay so if a log contains record tn start but doesn't contain the record either commit or abort okay then we, what are the operation that we have to perform that will be undone okay so now recovery with concurrent transactions so how if at all in a transaction we have serializable and concurrent transactions in a in a concurrent transactions how the recoverability will be done that we have to know by using the important concept that is what checkpoints here okay so when more than one transaction are being executed in parallel the logs are interleaved with each other the logs are interleaved so at the time of recovery it would become hard for the recovery system to backtrack all the logs why because they are not in a serializable manner they are interleaved concurrent transactions right so it is very hard to backtrack all the logs so and then start recovering so for this purpose here to ease the situation most modern dbms use the concept of what here checkpoints so what is a checkpoint here so keeping and maintaining logs in a real time and in a real environment may fill out all the memory space available in the system as the time passes the log may 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 grow too big or to be handled at all so whatever the logs that we have created so those logs will be kept in a storage so it will become too too much big to uh, to store and everything right so checkpoint is a mechanism where all the previous logs are removed from the system and stored permanently in a storage disk that is nothing but so here whatever the logs that have been completed okay those will be moved permanently to the secondary storage devices okay so what kind of logs that we need to take to move to the storage device that will be represented by this concept checkpoint okay so here checkpoint is a mechanism where all the previous logs are removed from the system and stored permanently in a storage disk so checkpoint declares a point before which the dbms was in consistent state and all the transactions were committed let us discuss this one with a simple uh, diagrammatic representation so see here this is what the transactions here we can see four different types of transactions t1 t2 t3 and t4 okay so here we need to refer from backwards right from back to front like this in this manner so we can see that the t4 this is what the starting state this is what the ending state of a transaction let us assume that this is the starting state this is the ending state see t4 in t4 we can see only starting state but there is a chance of failure there is a chance of failure why because we, we can't see the ending state here this is the failure line that means 
there is a chance of failure at this particular point okay so if at all a transaction completes this one that is nothing but see here uh, t3 has starting phase and committed phase and t2 also starting phase and committed phase and t1 it has only committed phase so here t1 can be moved to the secondary storage devices okay and t2 t3 also can be moved but t4 can't be moved why because it is still in a process that we need to whether we need to wait whether the transaction is successful or else it has been there is a chance of possibility of failure also that is what here the checkpoint is meant for so when a system with a concurrent transactions crashes and recovers it behaves in the following manner this is what the diagrammatic representation so the recovery system reads the log backwards from the end to the last checkpoint backwards the recovery system leads log files from the end to start it reads log files from t4 to t1 that means here t4 t3 t3 t2 and t1 from backwards recovery system maintains two list that is what here redo list and undo list so when we used to do redo and when we used to do undo if at all a log contains tn start and tn start and tn commit or only tn commit then we have to do redo or else we have to do undo that means if a transaction contains only start so whatever the transactions are in redo list now t1 t2 t3 are in redo list so which transaction is in undo list t4 is in undo list why because so here it has only the start stage no commit okay so that is what recovery system maintains two list redo list and undo list and the transaction is put into redo state if the recovery system sees a log with tn start and commit or just tn commit in the redo list and the previous list all the transactions are removed and then read and before saving their logs so for example let us discuss this one with a simple example so what is that one so in the log file transaction t2 t3 which i have already dealt in our previous diagram t2 and t3 will have tn start and tn commit t1 transaction will have only tn commit in the log file that is why the transaction is committed after the checkpoint is crossed only the checkpoint is crossed then only the transaction has been committed so hence it puts t1 t2 t3 in a transaction into a redo list transaction is put into undo state so if the recovery system sees only the state tn start but not commit okay but no commit or about in the undo list all the transactions are undone and their logs are removed so here transaction t4 will be in which state will be in undo state why because it has only start okay transaction start operation so t4 will be put into undo list since this transaction is not yet completed and fail emit there is a chance so one of the recovery algorithms that is what we called as here aries a r i e s which is uh, the acronym of aries is algorithm for recovery and isolation exploiting semantics okay this is one of the recovery algorithms so here this algorithm contains three phases analysis redo and undo so in this analysis phase identifies the dirty pages in the buffer what is a dirty page here which we have already discussed in our previous sessions so if at all it, before committing uh, the operations the other transaction wants to read that or write the data okay and the set of transactions active at the time of crash the appropriate point in the log where redo is to start is also determined here in this phase what is redo pass necessary redo operations are applied when to when to do redo operation what is undo pass log is scanned backwards and the operations of transactions active at the time of crash are undone in a reverse order this is one of the uh, algorithms recovery algorithms which has three different phases analysis phase redo phase and undo phase 
what we have discussed in this session that is nothing but here recovery about recovery and atomicity recovery and atomicity log based recovery log based recovery here we used to discuss about the logs how to update the logs and which logs will be moved to the permanent storage devices or secondary storage devices which have to be in the system that we have discussed and the two approaches for modifying database that is deferred database immediate modification of database and then the last one that what we have discussed here the concept the recovery algorithm one of the recovery algorithms that is aries a r i e s thank you